Today I'm going to show you how to do this cool fancy LED channel that looks like it's built within the wall. It is flush up and super smooth. I've been looking at them for the longest time and I've always wanted one for my house. Unfortunately in this pandemic condition I'm not going to get a house anytime soon but my friend was able to get a house and this is what we're going to work on his house. In this video I'm going to show you how to do it up against the ceiling but you can do it against the wall or whatnot. The lights are being controlled by an app. Right now it's doing its thing whereby it's just pulsing between all colors of the rainbows. Let's get started with all the items that you'll need. You'll definitely need this uh, RGBW. It can change all colors of the rainbow as well as pure white. You'll need the controller for the LED strip. This is the Shelly RGB. You'll need a LED driver. This provides 24 volt of DC to this controller and ultimately to this LED, which is also 24 volts. Finally, you need the aluminum channel for the LED to be sit in. Optionally, if you were going to cut this into fancy shapes like I did, I cut mine into 90 degree angles. So you definitely need an angle grinder with a metal blade. You'll definitely need some Wago nuts to connect the wires. I love Wago nuts because they just snap in and they stay permanently intact. It would be nice if you have a voltmeter as well to measure the voltages to verify, but that's just optional. Here's another angle of this LED aluminum channel. You'll need to cut a hole in your ceiling to fit this part in. This is about a quarter inch deep within the ceiling. Or if you're going to do, do the wall, it's a quarter inch deep into the wall. This will be pressed up against the ceiling. And then you'll use compound to cover all of this up. So this is maybe uh, one eighth of an inch thick of compound. Here you can see it's already pressed up against the ceiling. I've already compounded so that you don't see the wings of the aluminum channel. It's all compound and flush against the ceiling now. I cut a hole of four by six, four inches by six inches. This way I can put the power supply up in here and hopefully I never have to take it out because of a fire situation or it's getting too hot or whatever. But you definitely need a way to access that power supply just in case. The kit that I bought includes six of these aluminum channels. Each of them is about three feet long, but we're only going to use five of them because the strip comes with only 15 feet of length. So here you can see that we are making the aluminum channels turn 90 degree. I know it looks uh, wiggly wobbly. I don't know why it looks like that on camera, but in real life it's actually straight straight away. Here you can see I use a metal angle grinder to cut the corner 45 degrees. This is the wiring diagram that we're going to follow. Notice how you can wire you can wire up with DC or AC. I'm doing DC at the moment. One of the most interesting thing is that you can use your existing switch to turn off or on, it can even dim as well, assuming that your switch has a dimmer built in. But the problem with this wiring diagram is that it requires two wires going in from the wall all the way to the power supply that I have up at the top of the ceiling. I didn't want to run any new wires, I just want to use the old existing wires. So we can only use one from the wall of the switch going up into the power supply. Maybe if I cut a hole big enough for the power supply to be inside the wall of the switch, then we can use the existing switch to control everything. But we can't because I have the power supply here up in the ceiling. So that's definitely something for you to think about if you want to use your existing switch to control everything. For me, I'm using the existing 
we're going to modify this wiring diagram a little bit just because I'm using the existing wall switch to turn on this power supply to turn on this LED. So the LED wiring diagram stays the same. This will be up in the ceiling. This will be up in the ceiling where I showed you earlier. My switch will be located somewhere here. When I flip on the switch, it will power up this power supply that's sitting up in the ceiling. So as of now, when I power up the switch, it will provide the power to this power supply and then power up this LED strip. This takes about within two seconds. Of course, when this switch on the wall is off, then power supply will not get any power. Hence, you can never control it with the app. One of the solutions I came up with was install a smart switch here. So that way, I can always use the app to turn on this smart switch and then ultimately will turn on this LED. That's definitely an option if you are going to wire it the way that I wire it. So let's review one more time. Power from mains is going into this switch. This switch is going to feed the power to this power supply. This power supply is going to provide power to this controller and this controller ultimately control this LED strip. Here you can see how it's wired from the LED strip to the controller. The power supply is going into the controller as well. The black core of the LED strip is going into this DC terminal. The LED strip has five wires, so be careful of that. Lots and lots of wires. One, two, three, four, five. This black wire from the LED strip is going into the DC. Here's another angle of it. If you are going to follow my design exactly, then cut wherever you turn 90 degree. On the LED strip, there are these copper color looking spots. Go ahead and cut where you need to cut. I cut mine at about uh, four feet. I solder all my wires in. Because my soldering skill is really lousy, I use a voltmeter to verify that none of these terminals are touching each other. Here, you can see I'm wiring the other connections to turn 90 degree. Oh yeah, here's a better angle of where you can cut the strip. See these spots right here, where it's copper color coded? You can cut along these lines wherever you need to cut or turn. The back of the LED strip has 3M sticky tapes. So just peel away and go ahead and stick it into the aluminum channel. Make sure that the aluminum channels are clear of any debris like compound. I had to clean again and again just to clear all the compound away. And then I stick the LED strip into the aluminum channels. This is a terrible photo, but basically once you stick the LED strip in, go ahead and stick the diffuser in that's included with the package. Here's my 90 degree turn. It doesn't look tight, but it is later on, it's, it's really tight. There's no gap. The diffuser also has this protective white film, so be sure to peel it away. I know it's really hard to see with my camera phone unfocused like this, but it's, it's there. Go ahead and remove the film when you're all ready to go. Here is another lousy picture that's blurry, but you can see that everything is connected, wire and cover, and ready to go. In this section, we're going to cover how to add the device into the Shelly app. If you haven't already, go ahead and download the Shelly app. It will ask you for your credentials. Go ahead and sign in or create another account if you haven't already. Add a room. I named this a second floor. And then go ahead and add your device. It's going to ask you what is your Wi-Fi network for the Shelly to connect to? Because the Shelly is, is all Wi-Fi. It's going to talk to your home network via Wi-Fi. And it has to know what your Wi-Fi credential is. So go ahead and click in your Wi-Fi credentials. I'm going to choose this SSID of TMVC. It's going to ask you if you want to use the same Wi-Fi settings for all of your devices. Go ahead and click yes. When you add the device, it will start scanning and see that this device is already in my house and ready to be installed. So click on your device that you want to install. Do you want to include the device? Go ahead and click in yes. Click on finish when it's done. Here's a confirmation that the device was successfully added in. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just name it RGBW, nothing fancy. 
click on an image that you want it to be displayed as. You can choose the door or light switch or whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it simple, which is this controller image. If there's a firmware available, it will tell you there's a firmware available and go ahead and click on update if you want. I'm updating mine as of now. It takes a while to update and once it's done, within like 5 minutes, then you can finally control everything. You can turn on and off instantly or if you want more control, go ahead and click on it. When you click on it, it will give you a bunch of options like colors, effects, posting effects, everything. It's all there. Hopefully this video gives you some confidence on what to do, how to install it. In the next section, I will show you how to integrate this into Home Assistant, which is much, much more powerful to control this LED strip. You can set up conditions, for instance, when someone is at the doorbell, this LED strip will flash red. If my Bitcoin account ever go up to 100,000, then the LED strip will blink green, green, green because it's time to celebrate. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.